Hi, I'm Rich Lund, this is Indie Labs, and indeed, we're going to put the science in your hands. When I was a kid, I went through a phase where I was really into prehistoric life and fossils. Wait, that's, that's a little misleading. Saying I went through a phase implies it's over. It's not. I'm still in it. I so very much love the idea of evidence of prehistoric life and getting to learn what it has to tell us about the history of life on Earth. But how do fossils form? Why do some parts of an animal's body fossilize and other parts don't? Well, today we're going to learn about one way that fossils form in a process called permineralization. And to help us learn about this, we're going to model this process and make some of our own DIY fossils. This is going to be fun. Materials you're going to need include at least one sponge. And it doesn't have to be brand new, but at least clean. If you have multiple, you can have some more fun and make a few more fossils. You'll need some scissors. You're going to need a good amount of salt so that way we can make a saturated salt solution. You'll also need a semi-large container that you can put a good amount of sand or dirt in. Sand is preferred. The less dirtier the dirt, the better. And you also want it to be mostly dry. And you're going to need enough of the sand and a container deep enough so that way you'll be able to bury your sponge. You got all that? Now this demonstration takes some time and depending upon temperature and humidity could take four days to even past a week. We'll set it up first then we'll talk about and learn about what's happening. The first step is going to be taking one of your sponges and cutting it into some sort of shape that to you represents a fossil. Could be a dinosaur bone, could be a skull, could be some sort of plant life. Get creative, have fun with it. This sponge is going to represent the body part or parts of the organism that's going to be fossilized in our process. Next up, bury your sponge. Be good to have one or two centimeters of sand above it and below it. Try to get it somewhat in the middle. Okay, if your fossil sponge is buried, now it's time to make the salt water solution. We want our solution to be saturated with salt, and that means as we dissolve the salt, eventually we will reach a point where no more salt can be dissolved. So mix in salt with your water and keep stirring until you get a collection of salt at the bottom that no matter how much you stir, just will not dissolve. Then you know it's saturated. Now how much of this do you need to make? Well, it depends upon your container, how much dirt you have, and what size your sponge is. But once you've made your solution, what you want to do is now pour it into your container. You want to have enough of the solution so that way it reaches the same level as the dirt. Go ahead and add your solution, pour carefully, and if your container is clear you can also see where the solution level is compared to the dirt level. Alright, it's set up and ready to go. Now in reality you'd have to wait several days for the water to all evaporate from it. For this video, that's going to happen just a little bit here, but during this time let's actually learn what's happening and how fossils form. In the majority of cases, fossilization occurs to the hard body parts of animals. Things like bones and shells. So let's just say some sort of ancient marine animal with a shell dies. Something like a, a brachiopod. The soft organic tissue, well, decomposers get to that and break it down. But the shell, that might survive long enough to be slowly buried by sediment in the ocean. Now as the Earth's crust slowly moves and changes over time, after hundreds of thousands of years that sediment may have become hard sedimentary rock. And it has encased and protected the hard parts of the animal. Now sometimes sedimentary rock can be porous or have cracks or fissures in it that allows water to still seep into it. If water can make it to the buried shell, permineralization might take place. Now it's an incredibly slow process, but if water can get to the hard parts of the organism over a very long period of time, those hard parts can eventually be dissolved by the water. Alright, here's the cool part. As that water slowly dissolves the hard parts of the organism, well that same water may also be delivering trace amounts of minerals. These minerals, as they start to deposit, can build up and are actually now taking up the space that once belonged to the hard parts of the organism. Now this fossilization process, it's variable. It depends upon how large the animal was, how concentrated these minerals are in the water that's seeped into there. And while sometimes conditions can be right to where this could happen after just a few hundred years, typically this takes anywhere from thousands to hundreds of thousands of years. Now back to our brachiopod, you can actually see the permineralization that has happened here. Not all the minerals that have now made up this fossil are all the same. And this one you can easily see where portions of pyrite mineral have deposited. The brachiopod never originally had any pyrite, fool's gold, as part of its body structure. But its body structure has been removed by the water and replaced with minerals. Still, we can see easily the size, the shape of it, the textures of it. And also by knowing what minerals have done the replacement, that tells us a little bit about the geologic history too. Well, alright, for our demonstration, that's going to take several days to evaporate. and I have to wait for that, but for you, 
let's just edit to that part right now. Welcome back. It's actually been 10 days, you know, life happened, but let's check and look and see on our fossil dig what kind of results we've gotten. I want to be a little bit gentle here. Just like digging out a real fossil. I can feel there's some hardness. Try to scoop out around it. In fact, what I might try to do is now just get the spoon kind of under it and just lift up and pull and see what we get. There's our, there's our fossil. Let's see where he's at. Oh, there's the eye. Okay. It's got some hardness to it. Let's pull this guy out. We'll set him aside. Fossil. Grab this guy out of there. Ever so gentle. Now, just using another container to help clean them off. We'll start with the bone. And I'm just going to use a little paintbrush. Don't need it, but this might make it a little bit easier. And it's kind of similar to how real fossils might be cleaned up as well. You've seen Jurassic Park, right? And let's face it, this isn't necessarily a display model now, is it? So we won't get it perfectly clean, but clean enough. Go over this big boy next. But these are some pretty cool crystals here that uh, seem to have formed. I did not expect that. The rate of how quickly the air evaporates too can certainly affect the crystal growth. Salt crystals form a nice cubic pattern. See too, there's, there's a nice cube. There's a nice cube. So here they are semi cleaned up there's the fossils we made all right so yeah success and exactly how again does this model fossilization well this permineralization model idea the salt is acting like a mineral that otherwise in nature would be some other usually not as soluble kind of mineral and it took the place of empty vacancies in the sponge uh, along with certainly some growth on the top side it definitely models for us the idea of mineral replacement and giving us the preservation then of different body parts from animals. While not necessarily display pieces that you've made here, this is still a lot of fun and interesting and you know once they dry out fully too, uh, they maybe are some cool display pieces as far as showcasing your learning. Oh yeah. Hey, I hope you have fun with this one and I hope you get some really good fossilized spongy results. Thanks for coming along on this journey with me and learning about permineralization of fossils. I will catch you next time.